Warning, this video was made with little to no care, so it is totally unreflective of the quality of my other videos. Please watch some of them instead, I beg you. Read the disclaimer. Doofus. And please contact us through this email address with questions or fan art. Your support is appreciated. Yeah, I know what number episode we're on. Yeah, I also know that Earthrise has kinda sucked, but honestly, I'm so out of energy that I don't really have jokes to tell about either. Or at least the creative motivation to think up of those jokes. <sighs> Salutations, denizens of the internet. I'm Firebite27, and let us commence our analysis of Earthrise Airwave. Okay, now then, before we go any further, I'd like you all to know that I really, really don't have a lot to say on this figure. Not because it's bad, or not because it's not interesting. It's just because Earthrise has left me so drained. And I'm gonna ask you to do something totally unprecedented. Go watch someone else's video because I'm not gonna be able to do justice to this figure in my own review. Okay, let's do positives first. Paint is good, sculpting is good, and also, this mode is the least lazy with its kibble! I want you to look under this pavement, because does it look like anything's wrong here? No, it doesn't, because nothing is wrong. It just looks like a nice solid wedge of pavement for MicroMaster to drive over. And honestly, they're my biggest problem with this figure. Not the fact that some of the other modes look bad, but, well, these are the only two Micromasters that feel like they're worth the same as a Prime Wars Legends figure. Now then, let me be clear, I'm not hating on the Micromasters as a concept. I think for that, the most part, they were executed competently, but every package I bought, with the exception of the combat, or whatever patrol it was, the two blue guys up there, when I bought their pack, they were the only ones that made me feel like I was paying more for the toys inside than I was the actual box that I then threw away. And I think I would have been willing to buy these and pay more for them if they had sold the entire squads as four packs for the price of a Prime Wars Deluxe. But sadly they didn't, and instead shoehorned in a bunch of weapon changing gimmicks that I usually disregarded. But to be completely f fair to the figure, those are not problems with the figure itself. They're more problems with the fact that, well, the MicroMasters feel like they're a ripoff. Overall, this mode's competently executed, but shit, the other modes were not. Behold, the only other good base mode, and I use good loosely because it's super boring. Honestly, this just reminds me of a rest stop I see in Michigan, so it's not really that interesting. And from the back, it has absolutely terrible kibble management. Ugh. It's like it's not even worth making the joke about it. For starters, both arms are super, super visible, and the chest and the crotch form a weird sort of dried head. Whatever. Okay, to be quite frank, I apologize for the lack of effort in this video so far, but... Ugh, this one requires the least amount of effort because it's the worst thing that this figure does! <laughs> this mode is based off of the G1 figure and its ability to turn to this weird artillery platform. And I wish they hadn't included it because it is loose and refuses to stay up. To be perfectly honest, I can't tell what this is. The best I can think of is an artillery battery. Though I can't think of any artillery batteries that just have... I honestly haven't seen an artillery battery with this much crap hanging off of it since the adventures of Baron Munchausen. Then again, maybe I'd like the salt mode more if it fired John Neville as a projectile. So yeah, the salt mode ain't great. 
let's just get on to the final mode. Okay, I'd like to take this chance to just apologize for the absolutely abysmal quality of this review. I... Honestly, I just didn't care about this figure enough to give it a proper video. I'm sorry to all of you who are watching this and think that I've now gone to shit. I'm planning on doing another video on Friday in which I do put more effort into it. But for now, honestly, I'm just doing this video out of an obligation. And to be perfectly honest, I shouldn't be making two videos in the same weekend, especially ones where I'm trying to force out the script. But as long as my Christmas special this year is okay, I think this... One video being a dud will be worth it. If anything, this video should just serve as a lesson to those who try to force out a video each week. Now then, unlike most of the vehicle modes or base modes, the robot mode is actually very good. It's well painted, well sculpted. Despite being a new character from Hasbro, it actually looks distinct in its robot mode and its head sculpt. I genuinely like the head sculpt too. Though, having said that, I can't tell if the circular thing in the middle is supposed to be his pupil, or if the orange paint apps on the sides are meant to be his eyes. I honestly prefer the eyes interpretation, because otherwise, why would the orange paint apps be there? A and B, if that is the part of the robot mode that's meant to see, then why isn't the middle of it painted a different color? Also, the figure uses a lot of Brunt's parts. Mind you, that's not a problem, since Runt actually rules, but it is something to note. The hip parts are the most obvious. I mean, just look at them. They are the same part. The knee pegs are also the same part. And I'm actually kind of glad the wheels are also reused, which means yes, you can do de do this figure. The peg on the torso is also recycled, as are the elbows. Although those are turned upside down, interestingly. In terms of articulation, Airwave sports a head swivel, shoulder rotation, bicep swivel, waist swivel, thigh swivels, knee bend, knee swivel, and an ankle tilt. Now then, unlike Ironworks, he doesn't form any weapons, though he does have two accessories, a pair of guns. We're sure those are guns and not butt plugs. Funny you should say that, because I was actually going to make that joke, but I decided to cut it. <sighs> I think I'm probably going to do a massive compilation for Patreon members of if all the gags are cut out, but that's probably one of the biggest ones. It is. Though, I think the reason why they cut out the weaponizer functionality is because, well, it, it wasn't going to be intentional on Ironworks, but much like Siege Prime, well, his hover mode anyway, they decided to make it a DOCUMENTED FEATURE before a Hasbro executive told them off and rightfully so, I think. So overall, is Earthrise Airwave good? Yes. He scores a respectable 7.5 out of 10. But honestly, the reason he doesn't score any higher, like a 9, is because I can't recommend him for everyone. I can only recommend him to you if you're a fan of the modulator gimmick, or, yeah, I don't know, you're an Earthrise completionist. Otherwise, just... Don't even bother. I mean, it is good that Hasbro is trying out with the original characters, and this is one of the best original characters they've made. In short, I really do like it, but Earthrise in general has drained me both emotionally and financially to the point where I might be dropping out of the hobby altogether. Look, look, I know it would be sad, but nothing can last forever. Not my affinity for this franchise, nor the amount of money I can spend, nor the amount of time I'll be able to spend in my parents' house escaping the reality of the world. I'm gonna have to get a job. Sometime, I might even have to give up this channel. And that's just the sad truth. And to be completely honest, the only way I can see them pulling me back in for another year is if they release a Beast Wars generation. It's like, oh, son of a bitch! With that being said, this is Maya and Fire Ride 27 over and out. And don't forget that we've still got one more video coming this week. See you Friday.